Welcome back to another episode of Misplaced Garage. Today, I'm gonna be going over my recent purchase. Well, recent to me, I guess. Uh, you guys might have seen this in the background of some videos sitting outside under my patio over here and I still haven't gone through it and I still haven't really showed you guys what it is. So for a long time I've owned a lot of different motorcycles. I've owned a lot of 175s like this one. I've owned uh, 100cc, uh, 175, 185. I've owned a lot of different motorcycles. I've actually owned this bike before, not this model but the uh, 185, so a Suzuki TS-185. For a long time, I've wanted a 250. I've just wanted a larger bike, hence I think everybody eventually wants a larger bike once they've gotten pretty good with a smaller bike. You know, you wanna step up to another category of motorcycle that you can get good at. Uh, I didn't wanna go huge bore. I didn't want like a 400cc two-stroke. So I wanted a 250 and this has been a long time coming. As you can see, this is a 1973 Suzuki TS 250 Savage. And I have been wanting a motorcycle like this for a very long time. I bought a, a 175 to hopefully replace the need for this, but it didn't fill the void. So I wanted to get a bigger motorcycle. So this is in fact a pretty rare bike. They didn't make a ton of these, especially in the orange and green color. Uh, it does have a clean title, so obviously that was a major purchasing factor. It's missing some parts like the headlight bucket, but the headlight bucket is shared with other TS-185 models, so that should be uh, pretty easy to find. That's not a big deal. It's missing some things like blinkers and whatnot, but for the large majority, all of the parts are there. Uh, the seat, or it's missing this little uh, cap for the two-stroke oil. And the oil injection system is still in place, so it still does function. This bike just needs some love to get it functioning again, kind of like that. This appears not to be spring-loaded properly anymore. Or maybe, man, knock the bike over, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's got some things that it needs to be fixed up on. To my knowledge, it only has 4,500 miles. Looks like that little cap is kind of loose, so I might have to figure out how to fix this. I bought this as like a fixer upper because I didn't want to spend like $5,000 and get a pristine model and then never want to off-road it. So I think this is the perfect level of fixing up and off-roading at the same time. Uh, the previous owner did take the frame apart and repaint the frame, so that's one of those things where even if this bike was in pristine condition it's now technically restored so i'm not afraid to ride this bike now uh, he did put a newer carburetor on it that's a lot bigger than the factory one so i don't really like that i like factory stuff so i'm probably going to put the original carburetor back on and lucky for me this came with a bunch of original pieces so this is the original carburetor to the bike this is the steering dampener and lock i believe uh, came with a baffle too, took that out. Uh, I prefer my motorcycle is a little bit quieter than no baffle. Came with a battery tie down along with the tool kit for the motorcycle, which I think is pretty cool. So this is technically now its second owner because I bought it from the original owner, which I think is pretty darn cool. The motorcycle did run and it did ride when I purchased it. Uh, I didn't really like how it was running and riding, so I took all the gasoline out. Obviously, I purchased this in the winter time, so I wanted to drain the tank and uh, kind of store it. Uh, I'm not gonna start it up in this video, but if I have a video of me riding it when I did buy it, I'll put that in this video. It's not a perfect motorcycle, nor will it ever be. It's from 1973, and that's that's okay with me. Uh, the chrome on the wheels looks 
extremely nice. I can tell that this bike was, was stored indoor and wasn't completely beaten on in its lifetime because the, the rims are pretty true. They don't wobble too much. Nothing is really that far out of place for me. Uh, all the gears work through the transmission. If you guys wanna see kind of like a, a restoration or not necessarily a full on restoration, but like a build series in this motorcycle, I am gonna keep it mostly stock. I'm not gonna do any crazy build like painting the wheels black or nothing like that. I wanna keep this bike pretty original. Kind of like this uh, 1971 CT175. This bike is pretty much as I purchased it, other than the fact of getting it running and riding. Uh, I do need to go through it and kind of clean it up and make it a little bit nicer, just because it is very crusty. It did come out of a barn. Uh, it pretty much got unburied, <laughs> so that was a fun one. I didn't take any video of this, buying this bike really, just because I didn't, I don't like shoving cameras in people's faces, so I kept this one to myself. So a couple of specs on the 73 TS250 Savage is it makes about 23 horsepower. That's peak power, I think at like 5,000 RPMs or something like that. And it also makes about 20 foot pounds of torque also at about 5,000 RPMs. So it's not a slouch of a bike and it's not exactly a rocket ship, you know? 23 horsepower on a motorcycle that's pretty small and doesn't weigh a whole lot is quite a bit. That bike has a high compression head. Uh, I think originally it made about 15 horsepower, so it's probably at like 17. And that bike actually feels pretty darn fast. This bike feels a lot faster than that one. So that's kind of saying something. Yeah, if you guys want to see more on this motorcycle, please let me know down below. And that'll be it for this video. Just showing you guys the next possible build on the channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.